Hey guys, it's Rory, and uh, today we're going to start off properly the uh, hardcore Kerbal Space Program series. I know I've uploaded that video already, which was the um, sort of preview of and all the mods and how I've configured them. Um, if, I, if there's anything I change, I'll tell you when I change it. Um, but yeah, today I thought it would be best to start off with just a quick flight. Um, I'm going to try and build a nice flying plane and maybe take it over to the island on the other side because, you know, small steps first uh, before we go into space. I think uh, even humans started off with planes before they went into space and there's a few things I'd also like to try out. So we're going to make sure that fair aerospace is working, that kind of thing. That's the idea of this one. I would also like to talk about it because I've not actually done a video on Point24 itself and I'm not going to because there wasn't that much changed. I mean, that wasn't just adding contracts, so you can try it out for yourself, basically. Um, but yeah, this new engine is the orbital maneuvering engine thing, kind of like the same idea as what the shuttle uses to do orbital maneuvers. It's really cool. I've tried it out. I uh, really like that. Good addition to the game. And... Uh, yeah, where is the other part that they added? They added another engine. It might be in control, actually. Here we are, the Werner engine. And this is like the anywhere linear RCS port, except it uses um, liquid fuel and oxidizer. And uh, basically, it's... I guess, what's the, what's the best way of putting it? It's like if you, if you want to have good control over a big rocket, you'd stick a few of those on because RCS isn't strong enough but it does get controlled by the RCS input, like the controls, um, but uses the liquid fuel and oxidizer. I guess that's the easiest way of saying it. So we're gonna build a little plane here. Um, here we go. I guess we're best off just going with a fuel tank to start off with one of the um, jet fuel tanks. And uh, I'll try a little bit of um, structural fuselage as well. Where is that? That might be in, yeah, the structural tab. There we go. So I'm going to show you a bit about how um, Ferrum Aerospace changes some of this, or near, as it's called, because it's not actually far. As I explained in the first video, if you want to go back and see that, then you can. So now, all these things, like, for example, putting the wings on the bottom of the craft, actually have an effect on how it flies, um, and it's a, you know, a reasonably large effect as well. It's not just like it doesn't really change anything, but it maybe makes it feel a little bit different to fly. It really does have a significant effect, and um, the way that you place the wings, that kind of thing. So let's have a look. Center of thrust, center of mass, center of lift. Get rid of that one. So the center of lift's quite far back. Um, and that's the other thing, even in this view, the center of lift is calculated differently. And you can see as I... Okay, that's kind of weird. Yeah, it's calculated differently and it even shows how it... You know, it even shows differently in here. It's not like it's only calculated when you're outside, which is kind of nice. So, uh, let's see if we can build a decent plane then. Uh, I can stick a couple of these on, that looks kind of cool. Um, or maybe even some of the ones with control, like that. That looks good. And then we need some of these control surfaces. And, uh, yeah. We don't even need that much more, I don't think. Maybe a couple at the front as well, because the center of mass is quite far forward in that might be helped if I move the fuel tank back. So that means that as this thing um, runs out of fuel, it's gonna get more stable and less easy to fly, probably. Which isn't necessarily a good thing. But it's okay, it means it'll be easy to take off. So, with a couple of those stuck on, this thing should actually fly reasonably well. Just got to add a couple of, um, of small gear bays. And then, there we go, add those at the bottom, and then add one at the front, just like that. And we should be good to go. So this is the, um, I don't know, let's just call it the, the plane 
uh, the jet plane Mark 1, because that's what it is. And yeah, there we are. Let's see how well this thing flies, and I'll show you. You'll be able to almost tell, but it's kind of difficult, but you should hopefully be able to tell at least. Oh, air intakes, forgot about that. Got to go to the space center and recover it, see? Um, whoop. We've got to go and recover it, because we can't revert, as you may have seen if you've been uh, in the video, and you've seen the video that I did before. Oh, that's another cool thing we can try out. I uh, forgot about that for a second there. But now, uh, if I move this away, these parts are actually kind of useful now, because they actually take in air. So I wonder if I can use that one. I wonder if that'll work. Looks like it should work. And the center of mass will probably be... Yeah, it's still okay. So those actually take an intake air now, both of those, the engine, the cell, and the other one. This is the nacelle. And yeah, that should mean that we can do this. Here we go. Let's just hope it actually takes off. Ooh, see, I'm not using any SAS now, so it might fly a little bit weirdly. It's starting to go down. And one of the things I like to do with planes like this, when I've got far installed, is instead of just trying to use SAS to keep it straight, I use trim. So I can actually uh, do what's called trimming the pitch to make sure it doesn't, so that to make sure it flies straight. So the way you do that is you hold down Alt and then you press the direction you'd like to adjust the controls in, and it sort of changes the center point of the controls. So now you see it's flying really straight, and that's because I've hold, held down Alt and pressed S for a couple of seconds, and it's very very gently made it so that this plane actually holds that angle slightly upwards so that it's balanced properly and that's actually really nice so now it's a lot easier to fly but I don't need to use any SAS uh, which you know makes it nicer to fly as well a bit more fun it feels more like flying a plane so that's one of the things that I think is a lot more good to do when you've got FAR installed uh, the other thing that FAR does um, is actually effectively thin, makes the atmosphere thinner at lower altitudes um, or thinner in general I think is probably a fair thing to say which means that uh, it's actually a little bit easier delta V wise to get rockets into orbit I was actually considering um, installing this mod which decreases the ISP of engines to make up for that but the other the problem with that is it also kind of decreases the ISP of engines that you might want to use when you're in space and means that they're less efficient as well so I decided against that in the end. But yeah, you can see this thing's handling really quite nicely. It's sort of a bit wobbly because it's not very long and it doesn't have, it's not that stable. But it's really, it feels like it, I'm flying a plane now, which is kind of good, rather than what it usually feels like. It feels a lot more sort of organic. It's quite fun. If, if you ever get a chance to try out far it's, or near or whatever you use, the aerodynamic mods, those are really good. Um, they can make a really good addition to your game, and yeah, this is, it makes making planes actually kind of rewarding and a bit more interesting, I guess. So there were some other mods I was thinking of adding, like maybe some kind of life support mod, I might do that still, I don't know, but it's not really relevant yet anyway, and they're again one of those things that kind of, almost like the delay, signal delay in um, remote tech, it basically just means you're adding more parts to your ship um, and generally you know they don't actually make the game that much more fun it just means you end up adding more parts to every ship that you make but yeah hopefully um, this should be actually quite a progressive uh, progressive series so now I'm going to show you how we land with FAR I've cut the engines so that this thing can glide and uh, let's see if I can just bleed off a bit of speed by doing some flips Whoa, not handling too nicely. See, it's stalled really, really badly there, um, which just means that the wings aren't taking the air properly because you're going too slowly, and then therefore don't actually do anything. I might have to add a bit of thrust here just to get the speed back up again after that. So planes can be a little bit more difficult to fly, but it's also more like real life. Anyway, I'm going to... Okay, 
probably have to come around for another pass at this. We'll see. I have put SAS on to make it a little bit easier to hold it straight so it doesn't wobble quite so much um, when we actually do come in to land. So I'll just give it a little bit of throttle now and then make a little turn around. And you can see we've got Jebediah, hopefully he won't die, but if he does then there's not really much we can do. I would have actually disabled the three main Kerbals, i.e. Jeb, Bob and Bill, but I kind of forgot to, so I'm not going to worry about it, it wouldn't really be a big deal. But I would have disabled them so we don't end up having them. And because they don't respawn anyway now, it's okay. So, uh, let's see if we can bring this round. I think also the landing gear is having an effect on how badly this thing flies, because it's actually sort of uh, modeling drag on them, basically. Um, so that's the other thing, drag is calculated in the default KSP just by like the parts weight and where they are, so it's not really terribly realistic. Whereas now with this, it's actually calculated by what's hitting the air and what, what surface area is hitting the air. So it's a lot more realistic and it makes it a little bit more interesting. Anyway, there we go. Now we can hit, um, I believe, oh no, I didn't want to take the gear in. Okay, you just hold down B to use the brakes basically. Uh, or you can click the little button up there if you want to toggle them. Um, and there we go. That wasn't too bad. Might have to turn around before we uh, take off again. I don't know if we can take off by the end of the runway, and I don't want to risk killing Jeb yet. Um, while it will probably happen, I don't want to kill him yet. So that's going to be one of the other interesting things about this series, I hope, is the fact that if I screw up, then I've killed the Kerbal, and it's not good. Anyway, I think we're just going to have to try and take off here. It probably will glide okay. Oh no. Oh, okay. One Kerbal down, two to go, before we start getting procedural generated Kerbals, because there's literally nothing I can do now. That was silly of me, I should have been a bit more patient. But, well, that's going to set the tone for the series quite well. So, thanks for watching guys, I hope you liked the video, and have a nice day.